make, 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 make them clap to this. To show our Man, I love music. I love my music. And I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. Does that mean, though, that I have to give up the music that I love, especially the music that I grew up listening to, because now I'm a Christian? One thing virtually all of us have in common is that we like to listen to music. Same thing with television and movies, but music specifically because it's something we can do or listen to on the fly while we're working out, while we're doing work around the house, while we're driving, those sort of things. We seem to always want to have something in our ear. The question is, if we're Christian, does that mean that we can only listen to Christian music? Well, there are some songs that I really, really like. Matter of fact, there are some songs, some iconic songs that all you need to do is just simply hear the intro of the song and you recognize it and you start moving. I don't care if you're old enough to have listened to Bob Seger because he'll tell you today's music ain't got the same soul. Or if you like Frankie Beverly and Mays and you like happy feelings. If you just like driving and just cruising and listen to Schoolboy Crush. Some of these songs just have such iconic sounds and such lasting sounds that it brings back memories and just makes you smile, right? The J. Giles Band in Centerfold, or what about or maybe John Cougar Mellencamp. The question is, can I listen to those things? They make me snap my fingers, make me tap my feet, make me move, make me want to dance. But what can I do if I'm a believer? Now, me personally, I like all types of songs. I like all types of genre. I don't care if it's country. I was a young troubadour when I wrote in on a song. Yep, I like George Strait. I like country because some of the words, the lyrics, the, the message, it resonates because sometimes it's just true. Of course, I like my old school R&B from the 70s and 80s. But the question is, is that godly? Is it ungodly? Is it sinful or is it allowable? Well, there's a couple of things that you need to consider and they're all biblical. First of all, you want to make sure that you're not putting something before you that's going to cause you to stumble. Proverbs 4.23 says, watch or guard over your heart with all diligence. Why? for from it flows the spring of life. So if in your heart is, some of these songs, or let's just be honest, are pretty lustful, pretty pretty vulgar, and you want, don't want to have that coming in you, because if it's in you, eventually it's gonna come out of you. Which is why the psalmist says, I will set no corrupt thing before my eyes. Why? Because I hate the work of those who fall away. And so you don't wanna have something that's inside this, and it may not even feel like that. It'll feel like it, it, it'll feel like, hey, that was a nice song, but deep inside it might be adding some corruption because you start saying things that's in the song. You start mimicking things that were in the songs. You start hearing things and vocalizing things that were in the song. Something that's corrupt outwardly now is in you and it's going to come out. So you got to be careful. The Bible does say to set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on the earth. But does that mean I have to always set my things on the Bible? Does that mean that if I'm at work or if I'm at play or what have you, I've got to always be focused on the Lord? Let's be honest. That's pretty hard to do. That's hard to make yourself, to cause yourself to focus on nothing but the Lord. When you are in the shower, when you're driving to work, when you're doing work at work, whatever it is you're doing, it's hard to focus on that. Is that what he meant? No. He meant to have a natural inclination towards the thing of God, and that would be your focus. That would be your ultimate goal. And things that will get in the way of that, you should not have. If anything's going to distract from that, then eliminate that. The question is, will these particular songs distract from that? Would this song like this, would this song distract from what the Lord has me to do? Will I, will I all of a sudden start thinking about it and songs like it? And then would it take me off course from serving the Lord? 
Well, for me, at least that song, no. The fact is, the truth is, there are differences in the types of songs we listen to, right? Now, if you have any sort of musical taste whatsoever, you are going to be a fan of the elements. That is earth, wind, and fire. What does that do for me? It takes me back to my childhood. It takes me back to when I was a lot younger with a lot more hair. And it just, you know, puts a smile on my face. Does it take me to any sin? No. Therein lies the issue. Does it take you to sin? Would it cause you to sin? Would it also, would it also hinder or hurt or harm your image before the people? And then something else is just as important. Would it also cause someone else to stumble? My My old school rap that I would listen to, like Run DMC and My Adidas, or maybe Dana Dane and Cinderella Dana Dane. Would those songs hinder or harm my walk? Would it harm my reputation, the image of, or destroy my witness? What about Five Minutes of Funk? Would any of those songs cause someone to stumble? Well, it depends. You gotta be careful because what I might think is okay, someone else might take another song and say, well, listen, it's just like yours, and it also is okay. You have got to be careful. As a matter of fact, let's go to something that Paul brings up in 1 Corinthians 10. He says that all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, but not all things are edified, or not all things edified. Let no one seek his own good, but that of his neighbors. In other words, and he goes on to say about eating certain things, in front of people, you don't want to put something before someone else that would cause them to stumble because your focus should be them. The music should never be so important to where you would do something or put something or anything before somebody else that could tarnish your image before them or harm your witness or cause them to. Well, what do you mean, Corey? How in the world can a song cause someone else to stumble? <laughs> There are some songs, especially love songs, that if you're married, perfectly fine, especially if they're not vulgar. But, you know, some of the older songs, matter of fact, let's just be honest, some of the older songs were good songs. You listen to the lyrics today eh, versus the lyrics that we had then. These were the kind of lyrics that would get you married. Girl, you know I, I, I love you. He said, girl, you know I, 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 I love you. They don't write stuff like that. And then he goes on to say, no matter what you do. Yeah, that'll get you married. Now, do they make songs like that today? I don't think so. But then again, that's dating me and that's my preference. But what about someone who is single, who hears you and your spouse listen to that kind of stuff? What might it cause them to do? It might cause them to want to go out and get a spouse or pretend or act like they have a spouse and do those sort of things. It might cause them to get in a rush to do something to be like the married couples. It might cause them to sully themselves. It might cause them to go out and do something in a sexual nature that they have no business doing. And how that starts is it puts something in their mind. That's why the Bible says you should guard your heart. Even something that's innocent and it's okay for someone else to listen to, it might be hurtful or harmful for others. Think about this, and I'm not trying to compare adults with children, but there are some things that an adult might watch or listen to or deal with that you would not allow a child to listen to. There are sometimes even in the context of churches or Christians having conversations with other adult Christians that you would say for the children to excuse themselves. Why? Because you don't want that in them. You don't want them to be, uh, you don't want their impressionable minds to be affected. Well, single people have impressionable minds also if they are wanting to get married and they're trying to hold off these urges and temptations and then someone who's not considering them or at least thinking about them might bring a temptation, not necessarily intentional, but still a temptation nonetheless and would cause them to do what? Want to exercise what they hear in that song. <laughs> Yeah, and I know what you're saying. When Stevie Wonder comes on, it's kind of hard not to listen to. But for some people, it might be best for you to not listen to them. And yeah, some of the lyrics are, they're just awesome lyrics. Let's just be, let's just be honest. Stevie Wonder, he's, he's, a mu he's a musical magician. But still, 
the words that are coming out, are they profitable? Are they beneficial for our brothers and sisters? And and also, let's be clear, too. Some of the old school songs that we listen to, some of them are just right for a married couple, but not right even for an older single person, even if they're from the 50s, 60s, 70s, or 80s, even still. Why? Because it might cause them to think of something that they ought not be thinking of. If there's something in you that causes you to sin, if the music triggers something that causes you to want to sin, to desire to sin, to look for sin, then you know what you have to do. I don't care how good the song is. I don't care how, care how great it is. If it was Prince or Michael Jackson, if it was whomever it is you like, your favorite artist, I don't care who it is, cut it off. Make sure secular music in and of itself is not a bad thing. Songs that don't necessarily glorify Jesus aren't necessarily a bad thing. How do I know that they're not necessarily a bad thing? Well, because a lot of songs we use, we use to learn. Think about our ABCs. That was We learned it by, us, by a song. Happy Birthday, that's a song. The Star Spangled Banner, that's a song. And so songs that are not biblical, which means they're secular, in and of themselves are not bad. They're not sinful. What we don't want to do is cause them to be sinful or use them in a sinful fashion or cause someone else as though we enjoy it. It's not sinful to us, but cause someone else to stumble and therefore sin. So no, secular music in and of itself is not bad. Not all. However, let's also be clear. There are some secular songs that Christians have no business listening to. And those particular songs you should not listen to. That's the kind of music that you should say, don't listen to this music. Do not listen to the music that is going to cause you to think ill of someone else. It's going to cause you to want to fight, cause you to want to engage in some sort of sexual activity that you have no business doing, cause you to engage in lust or covetousness, cause you to want things that just are out of reach. You want you want to have more money. And so you hear songs that talk about money or how you look, songs that make you think about how great you are, songs that make you stick your chest out. That's one of the bigger problems with uh, today's rap, modern rap, especially. Uh, it kind of covers all of those things. Lustful, vulgar, degrading of other people makes you think highly of yourself when probably you're really not makes you even think about crime or things like that that you should not be engaged in going after uh, money in an ill-gotten fashion. There are certain songs like that, obviously songs that are demonic, songs that speak about something that is clearly sin or uh, of a dark nature. Those secular songs, I think those should be pretty obvious. Those are the kind of songs that no one, even a uh, well-matured, even a mature Christian should ever listen to. Why? Because now you're no longer guarding your heart. Because I can promise you this, what you listen to will find its way in your heart. What you listen to, as you see it, as you hear it, eventually it's going to take root here and it's going to come out. Some sort of way you're going to say something that was only found in that song or a thought and it's going to come out. If it's something that is okay, if it's something that's non-sinful, then it came from a song, no problem. No problem whatsoever. But if it's something that is going to take you away from Christ, it's going to hurt your witness, whether you are 5, whether you're 15, 25, or 85, it doesn't matter. These are the songs that can kill anything that is corrupt, ungodly, sinful. Don't listen to it. Avoid it. Amen.